record? Yep, it's going right. And to answer your question, am I ready? I was born ready. I know it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So I'm going to hit stop share. Three, two, one. Boom. And I welcome everybody's answer to be that to the question of, are you ready? Um, once I took a course and the phrase was, are you practicing to be a master, i.e. you're not there yet, or are you a master practicing? And the invitation was you picked door number two, that you were born a master uh, and consider yourself born ready and never wait per for perfection to actually accomplish what you want or be who you want to be. Life is messy at the best of times and let it be messy. Let your hair be a little wild like mine is today <laughs> with the wind and the breeze here and allow yourself to declare that you're always ready. And this is very timely uh, and theme as we kick off today's Wevo member and guest uh, benefit, this webinar, The Real Secret. And in fact, we're kicking it off a little differently today and Brett, in fact, asked me privately if we would do that. Normally, as you know, I would have a few slides ready. I'm facilitatively ensuring that you're integrating Brett's great wisdom. And today he asked me to kick off, yes, but a little differently. And I'm gonna do it in two brief ways. One is to say uh, a few highlights of what Wevo is, and more importantly, how you might consider coming to the Wevo table and the Wevo guest e uh, or tribe, even if this is your very first moment with us, in a new and different way to optimize your benefits. Worst case scenario is that we see you in a year and you're in the same scenario you were today. Best case scenario is your life is exponentially more the way you had imagined it to be. So briefly, I'll deliver you know, on that first one. And again, it may be messy definitions, but hopefully you get the, the vibration and the invitation as much as the actual linguistics. So a few ways to potentially do justice to this incredible blueprint called Wevo Global. One is that the rules on the inside of the game, i.e. on the inside of Wevo, are different than on the outside. Two is that I sense that if you're here at all, the rules that we're playing on the inside of this game are quote unquote, what we've all always wanted and or a percentage of which you're already doing naturally because that's who you are. Yet you may have been burned in the past by people in life or in business not playing by these common rules that serve us all. And you're all the more motivated to meet people by design versus by default or guess or hope that are playing by better rules of the game. What do I mean by that? Just again, sampling from Wevo, not necessarily hitting at all. Some of the rules of the game in Wevo and in the world that works and in what the top 5% do that the rest wish they knew is how we call it in Rewired Worldwide as partners with Wevo. We give first give often, give big, give forward. And the opposite of which is dropping, Wevo freedom. No uh, dropping expectations, manipulation, judgment and control. Just if we just work with those four, or those two, two by four matrix, what a heavenly world this would be and what we are generating and living by right here now. And there's more to the Wevo blueprint of why it works for us, us being humans, us being people who choose to play by these rules or in this game together better than it does for those who are still, so to speak, on the outside. So just highlights of what you're coming into or have chosen to be in, one, of which this Real Secret series of member and guest benefits will unbundle the magic of how this actually works and how we play this incredible game that we've all wanted to play and are inviting our highest and best pals and business and life playmates to come join us in. So that's what one thing that The Real Secret will do, this series of member benefit trainings on Wednesdays. And the second part of my promise uh, this today 
is to suggest a way that you might be that will have you optimize playing in this new game. It's kind of like, okay, we're playing baseball. You're, you've been picked to be part of the team, but you've never played it before. Or um, we're playing cricket, and you've been picked to be part of the team, or you've self-selected yourself that you want to learn how to play cricket, but you don't know the rules of the game. And or you're starting to be told theoretically what the rules of the game are, but how do I optimize and actually win this game and whoosh, knock it all in the ballpark every minute of every day of my life so that by the time you get to the end, you look back and say, thank God I said yes to being part of Wevo in this tribe so that my life's purpose and missions and goals, whatever they may be, were accomplished that much easier and faster with more pals and more delight. So the invitation, as I, before I tag team over to Brett, is to come to this conversation potentially in a new way. I'd love to see, in fact, I'm gonna open up uh, my chat box and I'd love to see in the chat box who has ever won, just give me a yes or no, heard the term teachability. And as I see the yeses and nos and or nods in the videos coming through, I'd love to hear where you heard it from as the second question, uh, potentially an audio series that many of us have li listened to or other ways, but I'd love to hear your mentor or your source or the book or the audio from various trainers. Okay, great, Tim. Thank you. Love to hear from Bruce. I, Sharon, I think I see you uh, typing. Love to see others. Yes or no, have you heard the term? Second, uh, got it all as well, Sharon. The fact that you know it is great and love your candor and love to see uh, from uh, Bruce and, and others uh, dialing in here. Second set of questions is, in my world of teachability, there are two components. Any memory of what those two components are? This is the final tough part of the quiz, and then I'll wrap it up with what that means to you and how you can optimize it. So love to see and love to see, love to see the pondering uh, faces, which is great. And do we, to know and not to do, or to know and not to remember, to hear and not to remember is not to know, to remember and not to do is not to know. Uh, Eric, okay, great, Bruce, in terms of your source, willingness to learn and willingness to accept change. Who is that boy? Might be our founder. Look at you knocking it out of the ballpark. Absolutely. So the two recommended or suggested um, scales on a scale of one to 10 are your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept change. So nice theory, again, let's take it at one level closer to practicality and, rea and reality, not need, meaning to rhyme, but sounds good, practicality and reality, it's like a new hip hop song. Scale of one to 10, knowing that this changes moment by moment, even in your day, let alone in your week, let alone in your life. So it's not like you can say, okay, I have unconscious competence and teachability. It can change for you depending on the mentor, depending on the theme, depending on your openness to take in new data. But I'm gonna invite you to continually ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, oh, what is my willingness to learn today and or this topic and or from this person? And also ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, your willingness, uh, to change, i.e. actually implement what is suggested. I could have put a, a learn beside the first one and change. That's how you're continuously self-coaching yourself and being aware. So let's take it one level further and say, back to where I started, worst case scenario is that we meet you a year from now and your life is the same, similar, or worst case, worse than it is right now, which is very common for 90 to 95% of humanity is things don't change. And best case is you are here because you know intuitively and or, intel and or correctly that there are nuggets of gold here for you. And whether it's in the principles and practices that I highlighted in Wevo around the four Gs of giving or uh, the four elements of Wevo freedom, or whether it's even more specific around how to build tribe, for example, a big concrete practical theme 
that Brett is going to be sharing. And more specifically, let me just bring it down to one super uber, I think, valuable to each one of you, is you may add, you may meet one person today, and therefore your tribe as an individual person, as a standalone island, may have grown by one person. So you wake up far and your tribe is one person bigger. Outside of the rules of this game, outside of Wevo. Inside Wevo, you meet one person today and you wake up tomorrow and your tribe is 10 people bigger or 100 people bigger. That's just one of the incredibly practical, valuable pieces of being part of this tribe. The whole Real Secret seminar will unfold for you how to do this, why you might want it, why aligned effort and energy is a heck of a lot better than isolated effort and exhaustion. And without further ado, I hope I've set the stage uh, powerfully enough, clearly enough, uh, inspiringly enough, relevantly enough to the tag team, to our uh, founder and mentor, Brett Labatt. Now that you have a taste of the why and the what of Wevo and your bridge to optimize it being your level of willingness to learn and willingness to change. So without further ado, uh, I am tag teaming over to Brad and just to answer your question, I see me, I don't know about, uh, whether you do, <laughs> 10 on both or it won't be impactful. A bingo Tim and good on you. And exactly. So I will love, oh, as this series unfolds as a final PS on The Real Secret and responding to Tim's great comment, to say that if Brett or I share something this week, um, next week, we'd love you to have taken the nugget that's most meaningful and useful to grow your business or your life or your tribe and have applied it and road tested it. That shows a 10 on willingness to change because most people say yes to a high willingness to learn and to change, but they mistake it for their willingness to hopefully have different outcomes in their life. A hope of different outcomes is different than an actual willingness and activity to change what you're doing because whatever you've done got you what you got. And if you're here, there's a high probability you want something different or bigger or exponentially easier. And therefore, you'll have to do something different or change to get it or we're all wasting each other's time. So I am not a dream stealer, I'm a dream builder, and I'm very practical and wanted to let you know, give you the heads up, oh, if I do something different, I'll get different results. If I do something the same, I'll get the same results. So here's to kicking off the real secret and to giving you different, higher, more powerful inputs and outputs for a greater life and tribe and purpose-filled existence. I'm thrilled to be with you, tag teaming over to Brett and uh, onward and upward to each one of you. Wow, thanks so much, Heather Ramsey in Toronto, Canada of Rewired Worldwide. Heather is a tremendous authentic leader and uh, mentors thousands of people and companies. And so we're really honored to have her and just super uh, grateful and honored to have each of you on the webinar today. Just a quick mic check and screen check. Can you guys see the real secret image? And um, are you hearing my audio well? Yes and yes. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm excited to get going. Just a little bit about me real quick. I, I usually uh, don't, one of my faults is I don't introduce myself often because uh, I don't want this to be about me. I really want it to be about you. And so I humbly, wanted to share a little bit about why I'm sharing this information, why I feel it's important for you. You know, I, uh, early on in my life, I, I came right out of high school. In fact, in high school, two, three jobs um, throughout high school. Didn't do very well in school because I just wasn't impressed. Um, but um, went to a week of college and, and at that time, I, I was landscaping courtyards in Palm Springs and I'd work about four hours and make a thousand dollars. And so I I made more money than a lot of people that were teaching in the schools, and I certainly don't fault, uh, criticize, or judge that, but at that time, my goal was to go out and make money. I mean, as a young kid, that, that's what was important to me, and so I went out and did that, and I did really well, and I got my first real taste of business and the real world and, and what influence would do, and so, you know, long story short, 
over my lifespan. I've, I've, uh, I've built companies. I've contributed to causes, to churches, to different things, and really started diving into the subject of authentic leadership, which is the first of the four interactions of The Real Secret. And what I can just tell you that my life has amounted to today is as a leader, as an authentic leader, uh, always uh, uh, doing well, but always striving to do better, uh, what I have effectively been able to do and what I want to be able to share with you is I have not only as a leader been able to evidence my ability in that area by people following, but more importantly, by leading other leaders to lead. And I really think that's one of the keys to a successful life, business, cause, planet. It's leading, it's not just leading people that follow, um, because that is a long and arduous process and, and can be rewarding, but it also can be very disappointing. But where real change takes place is when we become authentic leaders and we lead leaders to lead leaders. That's where the duplication process takes place and we're able to go out and achieve um, bigger things as a collaborative, as a collective. And so I, I, I put this information together so that you can enjoy and prosper from lead leaders. There we go. Thanks, Heather. So that you can enjoy and prosper from these principles, whether you participate in the Weibo model or you do not. Uh, we got someone with a little bit of feedback. Let me just take a look here. Okay, perfect. I think we're good. So whether you are part of Wevo or you're not part of Wevo, whether you're a member or you're a guest, I want you to understand that this webinar is not Wevo specific. The principles are all taught in Wevo, which is an evolved social network where we build collaborative, conscious, and responsible tribes locally, regionally, and globally. That's what Wevo is, Okay. So for the people, for the members that want to get this information that are on the webinar, this is for you. But also for those of you that are guests that just want solid information that is not theory-based, of, of course it started as theory and then I went out and proved it and then I proved it with other people. Um, but this is for you as well, okay? So I want to invite you to just be open, present, and to be able to enjoy that. So let's see if I can minimize that. There we go. All right. We'll go ahead and get started here. So why the real secret and why should you attend weekly? Two, sp two perspectives that I want you to think about. The first one is the world is evolving fast and the formula for personal, professional, and planetary success has been um, fragmented. And it's leaving a lot of people with questions on how to move forward positively. And so there's so much information out there, um, wonderful teachings, uh, different uh, methodologies, but we felt the need to simplify the formula so that anyone could apply accurate habits and activities to achieve great results. So what you're going to find in The Real Secret is um, that these are the types of people that usually will be attracted to this information and that are attracted to the Wevo model. Number one, individuals that are seeking a strong sense of community or what we refer to as high vibing thriving tribe. So a high vibing thriving tribe is a high vibration, positive, feeling good, happy, um, comfortable to be around, enjoyable, um, all the things that you would associate with high vibration, um, aware, right? People that are aware of, of doing well for others, doing well for themselves, doing well for the planet. And then thriving, you know, people are prospering. They're they're getting what they want. Um, they're, it, it's, it's progressive. It's moving. It's got momentum. And then tribe implies just a higher vibration of network or a higher vibration of even family. For me, as I think of tribe as all the people around me that I have influence with, that have influence with me, all those people around me that we are consciously aware of supporting each other in a collaborative, conscious, and responsible way. Okay, so that's, that's one. That's the first type of individual that's attracted to this information. The second individual is a professional solopreneur, small business, large business as well. I've had many large businesses. I have uh, some right now that are uh, potentially wanting me to consult for them. Uh, but uh, many are attracted. This thought leaders are attracted. Then, and and they're, 
they're um, these groups that are wanting methods to grow tribe and cre create results not only for themselves but but all involved really, which is a really good formula. It's got to be win 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 all the way around. And then individuals interest, interested in a proactive action to enrich their life, the lives of others, and to contribute to making the world better. There are a lot of people that want to make the world better, um, but their life is falling apart. And it's, it's a little bit tough when you're going through personal things and you're wanting to really look outside of that and um, focus on other people. So we really focus on a three-pronged approach. It's help other people get what they want, help you get what you want, or me uh, as an individual. So if I'm doing this in first party, it's helping other people get what they want, help me get what I want, and make the world better at the same time. We kind of call that, I have a funny saying, it's like, hey, let's do that and then go have a beer because it's really that simple. Let's help others get what they want, let's get what we want, and let's make the world better. That's a great way to live. So individuals interested in that are attracted to uh, the Wevo tribe or to this information. And then, of course, anyone interested in the Wevo model of building these tribes and its effectiveness and, and how they want to use that and apply that. Thanks, Heather, for taking notes and putting that in the chat. Surely appreciate that. And so um, that's who should attend. So let's take a look at, at how, and Heather covered this a little bit, and I'm going to just briefly cover it again with just a few um, ideas, but the old paradigm collides with the new. So let's take a look at some of the things that happen. As new information is presented, in a split second, we make a decision. Each second after, we make another decision. That one decision may be just to make another decision. But these decisions are made mostly from the level of our desire for change. So you've heard it this way before, and I'm really working on this statement because I'm not sure it's completely accurate, and I'm very careful about statements. Uh, even though I, I, I make many mistakes, I, I definitely uh, strive to be careful about statements that I make that sound absolute. But there is a statement that many of you know that it, when the pain of remaining the same becomes greater than the pain of change, um, people move. And so... What I'd like to say is that I'd just like to reframe it a little bit and just say that decisions are made mostly from the level of our desire for change, right? And so when you're uh, presented with the new paradigm colliding with the old, your motivation uh, to change is what is going to determine whether you are teachable or not. Teachability, I believe, comes from and it, of course, it could be a cart before the horse, the horse before the cart, the chicken, the egg. But in this case today, let's just think of it this way, that, that the desire to change is the uh, precursor to teachability. So if you have a strong desire to change, then you're going to be very teachable with this information. If you don't, this information might be an enhancer. It might be good for you just as a refresher. Um, probably not going to create a lot of change because you're not hearing it that way, which is not a judgment. It just simply is a reality. I sometimes don't even hear my own information the way I probably should uh, to make that effective change. So certainly no judgment there. But as this information is presented, you will make moment by moment decisions and those decisions will determine whether this information will serve you or not. So things to be aware of. I really, really like this one. If you're taking notes, you're going to want to uh, definitely write this down. Just check in the chat here real quick. Okay, perfect. If you're taking notes, you'll definitely want to write this one down. New information is consciously appealing. However, old subconscious paradigms and hypnotic rhythms that conflict will have more power unless an effective choice is made. And that effective choice is to accept the new information and override the old paradigm that conflicts and create a new hypnotic rhythm with that information. So as you're going through the Real Secret webinar and through this series, you have to ask yourself in that moment, would this serve your highest and best? Because consciously you'll resonate with it. But then subconsciously, the old paradigm is running the ship, even though we know that consciousness, that the conscious 
mind is the captain and the subconscious is the team. Even though we know that, the team is often calling the shots because the conscious has gone to sleep. So in this case, you're going to resonate with the information. Everyone does. I mean, it's, it's, it's good, solid, simple information. I haven't really had too many people that don't resonate with it. However, it's going to challenge maybe old paradigms, and at that moment is where you make effective choice. When conflicting truths arise, ask if the existing truth has been serving you and your definite purpose, and is there potential for the new paradigm to serve higher and better? Just because your best friend entrenched in you a thought paradigm, just because your mom, your teacher, your guru, anybody entrenched in you a thought, me, it doesn't matter. I, I, I cannot sit here and say that all my information is accurate for everyone. I can only say that it has been accurate for me and the people that apply it that I am aware of. Now, uh, for some people, it may not be accurate. So as this information arises, and if it conflicts with another um, potential truth, just to ask if the existing truth you have has been serving you and your definite purpose. And if yes, then you may stick with that. If not, then you can consider uh, a possible willingness to change. Most information is opinion and should be considered by your own intuition and feeling, especially if you're able to, to distinguish it from internal programs that do not serve. And I put a little funny note here, not all voices are created equal. So we all have voices in our head. We all have voices we listen to. Um, some of them serve, some of them don't. Uh, statistically, about 80% of the world thought um, uh, of thought around the world is negative and not serving. And so what I would challenge all of us to consider in this process of accepting this information is you're going to, you're going to have two things most likely happen. You're going to have your sensory, not including the, the sixth sense of intuition, but you're going to have your sensory of all of your experiences of your life try to tell you whether the new information uh, is viable for you or not. Be careful of that, especially if that old paradigm is not serving. That is not intuition. Then the sixth sense is intuition and, and this feeling that you can resonate with this information and go, this will serve me at my highest and best. So just, just try to be aware of the difference. You know, Make an effort to be uh, conscious and aware of that difference, and I think it'll serve you best. All right, so what is the real secret? The real secret is a formula of four interactions and four interactions that we call Wevo DNA. And what I have learned, what I have experienced, and what I've experienced in training others to use this information is that when they apply this DNA, it becomes the catalyst to empower the law of reciprocity in a positive way so that you can bring more of what you want into your life. Now, here's a fact, and I should have wrote this down with this definition. The law of reciprocity is always at work. It is nonstop. It is, um, uh, it, it, it is immutable. It is constantly going and unarguable. This law is always at work. It's evidenced in everything we do, often seen as cause and effect, or the law of the harvest, or sowing and reaping, but it is constantly at work. Now, oftentimes, many times, it's not working in our favor, uh, or for, for others' favor. What we want to do with The Real Secret is we want to show you how to apply the four interactions and the four interactions called Wevo DNA to get this working in a positive way so that you bring more of what you really want into your life. Now, what do you need to know before you can even do that? What is the one thing in the chat box? What do you need to know before you can bring more of what you want into your life? I'm going to go ahead and pause for a second. See who's listening, see who's engaging. But what is it that we need before we can attract more into our life? What do we need to know? Bingo, Sharon. You need to know what you want. Chief Aim, I love it. Thanks, Heather. We have to know what we want. Tim, 
What is it that we really want? There you go. I'll tell you my perspective of, of what I, I feel people are after. But um, yeah, Tim, you're, you're right on the money. So Tim, Heather, Sharon, thank you. Um, we're going to cover what I have learned after sitting, meeting with, and, and uh, maybe mentoring or at least adding value to thousands of people and companies. What I've learned is that we're all basically after four things, and we'll share that a little bit later here in this, this series uh, today. But um, yeah, you got to know what you want. And, and before you can apply accurate habits and activities to that, you need to know what you're applying that to. So that's an important factor. So thank you all for your comments. So what is the real secret? You have it there, you have four interactions. I'm gonna go through these interactions. Today uh, on consciousness, which is the first interaction, this is not a complete um, teaching on consciousness, obviously. Uh, that's not my place here and now. There are people better suited uh, to teach on that than I am. But what I looked at in forming the foundation of Wevo is I was looking for four unifying agreements that we all could somehow embrace in some way to create what we call harmonic culture or to unify people all over the world that are currently so divided by geography and so divided by independent culture, which is a wonderful thing, and so divided, uh, not the division, but the independent culture, and so divided by religion or so divided by politics or just a difference in opinion of, of likes and dislikes. I watch in amusement, not judgment, but amusement. It used to be judgment. I'm working towards it just being amusement today. But I watch in amusement how people will allow a like of something. I like champagne. Divide them from someone who doesn't. It is absolutely amusing to me. And I, when I think of consciousness, I think of the awareness of these four Wevo agreements and they build the foundation of who we are and what we are. Now, one clarifying statement in this Will there be spiritual principles in this teaching? Yeah, I think so. I think everything is spiritual, but it's also very tactical, very logical, very simple, very practical. Um, what I'm going to share with you in these agreements is an awareness to four things that if you're mindful of, I believe will serve you at your highest and best and create a, a unifying platform or a unifying tribe all over the world where we can at least agree on these four things. So the first awareness is divinity. The awareness of some sense of divinity in all things. Now you get to define that however you want. All I can tell you is that whether real or perceived, and you get to be the judge of that because I don't want anyone to lose their attention span over the fact that they think I'm talking about God or energy or universe or or higher intelligence, or something that you don't, a word you don't resonate with, you can have your own ideas and concepts about that. I'm not going to plant those for you. Here's what I mean by it. And by the way, no judgment towards any of that because I happen to, they all happen to resonate with me. But if they don't with you, don't let me, you know, don't unplug and lose your attention span because of that. But here's what I mean. Everything somehow is more than just connected in the world and in the universe. Everything is actually part of one. No matter how you look at it, everything touches something else, making up one complete unit. Now, when I'm aware of that, I realize that it's important how I operate in that one unit. That's the divinity that I'm talking about. You can expand that into your own personal perception of what divinity is. Aware of the planet, an awareness of this place we all occupy together. Everyone universally can agree at some level or another to that concept of planet. Aware of others, what I do to you, I am doing to myself. It's also part of the oneness of all things. 
and then aware of self. What I do to myself, I'm also doing to you. These are the Wevo agreements. So to be aware of and conscious of the divinity in all things, the planet, others, and self. And that's the first interaction of Wevo. Just become consciously aware. Evolve that however you like. We'll take it further in our different levels of membership and different teachings. But for now, in The Real Secret, what I really want you to understand and be aware of are these four agreements. The second interaction is personal evolution. Now, we've all heard personal development, um, those types of things, you know, develop yourself, work on yourself. Um, what the question I would ask you is to what end? To what end do you work on yourself? For what purpose do you work on yourself? What if you're perfect the way you are? What if, what if you are whole now? And I believe that, that in many ways we are. But towards what end? You literally could be putting information into your DNA that does not serve the evolved version of you. So what I ask and invite you to do is consider your personal uh, evolution as an uh, interaction in the Wevo DNA, that there is an evolved version of you that is worth getting to know. So the knowing of this evolved version is what inspires me to make decisions today to align with that version and be congruent. The third is be an authentic giver. It's essence and not nonsense. I won't go into the nonsense part, but you know internally if you're really in essence a giver or if you're not. Now, if you're not, no judgment, no expectation, no manipulation or control. We certainly are not here to place any of that on you. But what I can tell you is that one of the Wevo four interactions in the Wevo DNA is to be an authentic giver. The more you embrace this interaction, this essence, the more you will find enhanced and increased momentum and success in your life. If you're not congruent with it now, just be aware of it and allow it to evolve inside of you so that you can reap the benefits while you're uh, obviously um, through giving, creating benefit for other people and for the world. It's not a t-shirt we put on. And what I'll remind you of and, and part of the Wevo, uh, what we call Wevology, um, are the four G's, which is give first, give consistently, give big. As you grow and as you're excelling in life and business, make the gifts bigger. They're all proportionate. The bigger you get, give, give, give bigger. And then give back. So the first three are the keys to moving from survival to through stability and on to the rewards of success. The fourth one is that significance where you're giving back now, not because you're applying uh, the law anymore. You've applied the law. It served you well. Now you just continually are giving back because it is the key to a rewarding and fulfilling life and a better world. Okay, so be an authentic giver. And then the fourth one, wellness. Oh my gosh, this is such a big topic. You'll get more and more information on this. But in these four interactions, we round it out with the fourth one being wellness. Now, when I say the word wellness, you have many things come to mind. And they are most likely subtopics to the subject of wellness. Very accurate in your thoughts but they are most likely subtopics to the interaction of wellness. What I am a big believer in is congruence. Being an authentic leader, the more we are on the outside, what we are on the inside, which by the way, is not the world's program and stereotype of perfect or moral or good or right. Uh, I'm so sick of all that crap of other people's perceptions of who I should be and what I should be. That is not what this is about. What this is about is being on the outside what we are on the inside. 
appropriately. I mean, you, not everything is going to show up on the outside, but if you um, profess to follow up with people, then you want to follow up with people. You want to genuinely be that on the inside. If you profess to be a giver uh, on the outside, then you want to really genuinely be that on the inside. Because when your thoughts, words, emotions, and actions align, you are congruent. And I believe that when we're congruent, we'll find better health and wellness uh, throughout in all the major areas. And then conscious and subconscious in harmony as often as you can be aware to bring them to such. Now, oftentimes they're at odds uh, because uh, the conscious is typically going out and finding new territory and, and new things that we're going to embrace and, and new goals and new dreams and um, maybe new ideas and, and new paradigms. But then the subconscious has its role. And so the more we can bring those two into congruence and the more we can bring our authentic leadership into congruence, uh, the more wellness we're going to experience. Okay, the four interactions. This is where this really heats up for me, where I really start to get excited and um, my sweet spot. So if, if I was to, if someone said, and I do this every day, multiple times a day, when someone says to me, you know, Brett, what are you all about? It's, it's really four things. It's be an authentic leader, attract tribe, create harmonic culture, and align effort and energy. That, that's, that's my life. That's, that's, that's my entire life. It's be an authentic leader, attract tribe, create harmonic culture, and align effort and energy. Those are the four interactions. So authentic leadership is congruency. If you're taking notes, you might want to write these down. This recording will also be available, and you'll be invited into it as long as we have your email. So um, authentic leadership congruency. Everything rises and falls on leadership and you're the leader. Leadership is influence, and influence is today's capital. Influence comes from connecting, and connecting is 100% about the other person. So that's the first interaction. Authentic leadership. Then secondly, attract tribe. Being an authentic leader and having accurate habits and activities will attract your tribe. In The Real Secret, we are going to show you step-by-step step how to be an authentic leader in principles, activities, and habits, and how to attract tribe, and in that tribe, create everything that you want for yourself, for others, and for the planet. Let me see. I might have to mute someone here. All right, perfect. It happens. The third piece of the four interactions of the Wevo DNA is create harmonic culture. This one is huge. None of the rest will work without this. You must create harmonic culture. That is not everybody agreeing. It is people being in harmony even when they disagree because they realize that they would rather be reconciled than right. They realize they would rather be together than divided. And they have a respect and an honor for each other. And they allow each other to be. So we allow people to be whom and what they are with a warm and open invite to evolve. It's better this is modeled than just said. It really needs to be the culture is the essence of the people that make it. So that's why our own interaction is so important in the interaction of creating harmonic culture. And then the fourth thing, and this one is huge, this is where all the magic happens, the true mastermind. The parts serve the whole, and the whole serves the parts. Those are the four Wevo DNA of interaction. And you combine those with the interactions, and what I believe and what I've witnessed and what I've experienced is this is the key, the real secret to getting what you want. Now, there's a lot that goes with each of these uh, subtopics. What I have done 
in relaunching this webinar, we've, we've done several parts of it already, is I've shortened it because people were saying, man, this is great information, but it's a lot. Um, I'm, I'm having trouble uh, pulling it all in. So what I've done is I'm, I'm going to shorten it and build more tools around it so that we can actually just go week by week covering these points and giving you the tools that you need to go out and create the results that you want. I promise you, because I've studied long and hard and researched, that if you apply the eight DNA, not as just an activity, but as your essence of who you are, you become congruent as an authentic leader, you're going to find more of what you want being attracted into your life. So Weibo Freedom and, and the key to harmonic culture, allow others to be who they are while providing an example of authentic leadership. Reduce the emotional attachment to expectation, judgment, manipulation, and control of others. It's so easy to have an expectation. Someone came to me the other day and goes, I was really frustrated, but then I realized you said um, it's expectation that causes frustration. And you might think that, um, this serves. Well, you should expect people to be a certain way. It doesn't matter whether you expect them to be a certain way or not. They're still going to be who they are. You're not going to change that. Only they can change that. When you allow yourself to remove the emotional attachment to your expectation of them, then you can have harmony with that person because you won't build frustration, ultimately leading to judgment. Is this easy, easily done and easily accomplished? I don't, maybe. All I know is for me, and what's accurate for me, is it's a trigger that whenever I'm feeling frustration in another human being, I ask myself, do I have an inappropriate emotional attachment to this expectation that's leading to judgment, manipulation, and control? When the judgment gets high enough, if it's important enough to you, we start to manipulate and control people. And that's not freedom. Now, here's the danger of manipulating and controlling other people. You put yourself in a prison. You don't just put them in a prison. You put yourself in a prison. And this is the anti-environment of harmonic culture. It's the anti-harmonic culture. It, it's, it's not authentic leadership. It's not um, uh, going to attract tribe. It's actually going to repel tribe. It's not going to align effort and energy because there, will, there won't be anyone to align effort and energy with. So Wevo Freedom is an important part of the Wevo DNA uh, in that creating of, of harmonic culture. Let's check the chat here real quick. Yes, self-prison versus true freedom. All right, here's the Wevo. Aha, let me make sure. Okay, yeah. Here's the aha for this webinar. The saying, the world does not revolve around you, is actually not accurate. In point of fact, everything in the universe revolves around you. You are at the center of the universe, and so am I. Our thoughts, feelings, emotions, and actions resonate from us and are the catalyst to the higher law of reciprocity. The awareness of this creates a mindful practice to be an authentic leader. And the motivation to be aware is to create more of what we want in life. And we were talking about that in the chat. And what I have learned in my travels and my studies is that people are looking for these four things. And these four things we call Weibo Baha'i. Belonging, attainment, happiness, and inner peace. I've interviewed thousands of people and I have uh, went through an exercise that I go through with people that I mentor called the deep well of why. And it's an irritating process of oftentimes very revealing one and the one that usually kind of gets people to open up, but digging deep, deep, deep to find out why, why you want what you want and what you're all about. And so in the process of doing that, what I really learned is that people in general are after four things. They're looking for some sense of belonging or um, kind of like in, in the hierarchy of needs, the, the feeling known and loved. They, people are looking for that sense of belonging to tribe. 
That's why tribe is so effective and so important because it gives people that. They're looking for, but you got to be careful because you don't want to create an exclusive tribe or a, uh, maybe a cultist tribe or one that's based on just certain biases that that may not be healthy for people. And I, I'm not judge, trying to judge anything when I say that, but I can tell you in creating the Wevo tribe and these concepts, I wanted to be very universal and very inclusive that any religion, any political bias, any nationality anywhere in the world would feel welcome and feel comfortable. That type of sense of belonging and real harmony and real unity. And then attainment. People want things. It doesn't matter what the things are. Even the Dalai Lama, I went to see him in, in, Den, uh, in Colorado, and he said, he said even, even the, 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 the most dedicated of all practitioners still has att attainments that they desire. And it, it's not even physically possible to not have it. Those are his words, not mine. And then happiness and inner peace. And they're a good combo together, happiness and inner peace. And so I know for myself that those four resonate with me. Maybe they do with you as well. Here's the Wevo power statement for this webinar. This is something that if you want to take a picture of, of course, you can get the whole copy of this thing if you like it. Um, all this information is a gift. Uh, it's there regardless of what you do with Wevo, don't do with Wevo. Um, plug in every week or don't plug in every week, but each week all of the information is available to you um, because I'm just honored and pleased that you're on the webinar and I want to share these things with you if they serve you. If they don't serve you, maybe they'll serve someone else that you know. Um, I do have a belief though that they will serve everybody that attends. And so here's the Weibo Power Statement. I would um, take this, uh, make it your own if you need to in your own words, but here's something that you can go off. I am an authentic leader. My thoughts, words, and actions are congruent with my stated vision of myself, and this has made me powerful. I use my influence to help others get what they want, to get what I want, and to make the world better at the same time. I honor freedom for others and myself by allowing them to be who they are and myself to be who I am with a continuous invite to evolve. I am aware of reducing my emotional attachment to expectation, judgment, manipulation, and control of others because that is what I desire for myself. I'm an authentic leader. And I'll leave that for a second just so you can do a, uh, hit the PRT SCR on your keyboard print screen and, and you can copy that or take a picture from your phone, whatever works or a screen, screen um, capture. So your play work for this week is to consider the Wevo DNA and what they mean to you. Make notes, write questions or comments, and let's continue the dialogue. See if this resonates with, with your definite purpose. When you look at the eight DNA, see how they feel and how they resonate with your definite purpose. But put some mindfulness to this because um, it's important that you resonate if you continue to come week by week because now what we're going to do is break each piece down, sometimes in order, sometimes not, sometimes based on uh, priority we'll break these pieces down into not only the principles of the piece or the DNA, but also the practical application so that you can go out and if you wanna create more customers in your business, you're gonna create more customers. If you wanna create more retention in your employees, I can guarantee you if you apply the principles, you're gonna create more retention. If you want more happiness in your life, you will do that simply by becoming more aware of reducing the emotional attachment to expectation of other people. All these things will add to you what you want based on your ability to accept the information, have a willingness to change, and then apply the information in your life continuously. It's not hard. It's very simple. It's very doable. It's very practical. You're going to hear some, you know, maybe some more spiritualized concepts, but you're also going to get some very practical things like how to utilize LinkedIn, a $26 billion network, to generate tribe very quickly and build real connection, not digital connection, but real connection. You might learn things that, that are very practical like that. 
Um, you might learn how to uh, more appropriately engage someone one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to get a chance at that as well. So we're going to cover a lot of stuff. But before we do, before you choose to continue, you should spend a little bit of mindfulness on the eight DNA and make sure they resonate because all of the teaching from here on out will be under those eight DNA. And next week, we're going to get into authentic leadership, the principles, the activities, and the habits. It's my favorite subject, so we'll be, we'll be diving deep into that, and you'll be able to walk away next week with some principles that you'll be able to apply in your family, be able to apply in your community, be able to apply in your cause, in your business, in your life, um, in your relationships, how you approach them, how you approach work, how you approach if you're a supervisor or w whatever your role is in your, your job or your business, these principles are going to add value to you so that you can maybe either create more momentum and more success or maybe jumpstart the momentum and success if you've been stuck or stalled a little bit. So next week, we're going to cover uh, authentic leadership. And I believe that covers it. So we will unmute the lines. Oh, thank you so much, Tim. You rock, brother. I'm so glad you're on the... Um, uh, on the call each week. And what I want to do is I want to unmute everybody and just allow you guys to, um, let's see, unmute, 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 Oops. unmute, unmute. And we will give a, um, just a huge, oops. Uh, Brett, just one thing from Heather. Yeah, go for it, dear. Just to bridge the playwork, what I'm already doing in the call to action, again, how teachable are we, our willingness to change? Are we passively listening or are we already in action? Champions are taking notes. Champions are already taking the invitation that a mentor suggests and putting it into action. And so um, his, uh, Brett's suggestion for the playwork was to noodle around with those eight Wevo DNA and come up with notes and or questions. FYI, I already have my first question for Brett to kick off next week. And you may, to really work with those eight DNA, a suggestion is to rank them the, the number one that, quote unquote, you feel you're the best at and or you already have unconscious competence at as a way of interacting with the Wevo DNA. And the one that, quote unquote, you are you know, the weakest at, the least known about, the most unconscious and competent at. Um, so you could rank them, whether it be top and bottom or whether all eight, or score yourself. There's sort of a quantitative interacting with them as well as that will lead to qualitative notes and or questions. So just a suggestion, one level deeper of how you can really live the play work suggested. Again, champions take notes, champions take action and champions integrate and are better next week than when we found you last week. So just uh, concrete ways that I already am engaged in uh, the invitation of the play work and wanted to pay those forward to each of you. Awesome, Thank Heather. You. And by the way, everybody else on this call rocks too. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Awesome. As do you. Hey guys, uh, one quick reminder, you can invite people to The Real Secret by just uh, sending them to Wevo, W-E-V-O, secret.com, and uh, others can attend next week. Even if they come in in the middle of the series, they're going to have great benefit. And then also, the global intention call that we do on Tuesdays is Wevo, uh, what is it, Heather, Wevo Global Call? In the chat box already. Oh, you're so good. Right back at you. All right. Well, I think we are right at the top of the hour and it has been beautiful spending time with you. Uh, I trust that you'll find something in this that's valuable that you'll be able to be aware of this week and apply it in your life and business. And next week we'll come together on authentic leadership. Uh, blessings and gratitude, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Rock on. Thank you.